Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be attempting to save this poor Galaxy S10 Plus that's had a hole drilled all the way through it. As someone who often buys broken electronics, I see many abused devices that have been smashed by a hammer or even bent. But this one might be the worst I've ever seen. Its previous owner has had a rage so bad, they've drilled through the camera and display. Not only are we going to try and fix this phone, but also find out why the previous owner did such a thing. I saw this listing online and had to have it. I won it for 46 Australian dollars, which now that I think about it was quite a bit of money for an untested phone with a hole drilled through it, but I was up for the challenge. After unboxing it, I wanted to test if it had any life left in it. So connecting up a charger, you can see it's drawing current. Shortly after, the display flashes, but after a good charge, the entire phone powered right up. What amazes me is the fact that there's a hole through this phone and not only does it still power up, but the display kind of works. However, it appears to have further issues. The phone won't boot past the splash screen and is displaying a warning message asking you to press the power button. After doing so, the phone restarts and then shuts off. It sounds like we have a lot of work to do. It's time to start by getting inside the phone. I'll heat up the back using a heat plate at 120 degrees for a minute or two. From here, I could try using a suction cup to lift up the back panel and create a gap so I could insert a plastic pick. However, I found it just to be easier to use a metal pry tool to wedge my way in between the frame and glass. Given the severity of the cracks on the back, the suction cup couldn't get a strong grip. Ideally, you'd want to avoid using metal tools as they can scrape and damage the frame of the phone. Once the gap had been created, I could use a series of plastic picks to slice through the adhesive holding on the back panel. Lifting it out of the way, we get our first look inside this S10+. Plus. Everything inside is looking good, except for that obliterated camera. Luckily, the hole wasn't drilled through the motherboard. If that were the case, this phone would be unsavable. It's time to dive a little bit deeper inside this phone. We'll need to remove the wireless charging coil, and to do that, there are several Phillips head screws and some light adhesive at the lower portion of the wireless charging module. With that out of the way, we can first disconnect the battery before working on any internals inside the phone. From there, I'll remove the front facing cameras, one Phillips head screw and the SIM card tray. Down at the lower portion of the phone, there are more Phillips head screws which will need to be removed so I can unclip the speaker and get access to the lower portion of that motherboard. Unfortunately, this model of Samsung has no replaceable charging port. Instead, it's soldered right on. Thankfully, this isn't the case in other Galaxy S phones, including the S21. With two more screws and a couple of flex cables disconnected, we can get the entire motherboard removed. Then I can unclip the headphone jack and get this original battery out of the phone. We'll be reusing it, so it needs to come out in one piece. With a combination of the heat plate and some alcohol, I was able to free the battery with ease. What remains is the horrors of what this phone once sustained, with fragments of the cameras fused into the screen. Getting a look at our motherboard, it remains undamaged. If the previous owner had drilled just a centimeter below, the whole phone would be unsavable. It's time to get what remains of those old cameras out of the way to make room for our new camera assembly. All three cameras come as one assembled piece, so I'll disconnect the flex cables and remove the old camera module. With that out of the way, it's time to attach the new one. It is adhered down into place, so it will be secured well inside the phone. Pressing it down, I can connect the two flex cables to the motherboard. With that, it's time to get out our new display assembly. This one claims to be a Samsung service pack, although I don't really know how genuine that is. But as long as it works, I'll be happy with it. I've chosen to change the phone's color to the prism green option that Samsung offered, as I think it's one of the best S10 color options. You can see it looks quite nice and is fitted with the vibration motor and earpiece inside. Proceeding, it's now time to fasten the motherboard into the new display assembly. Given its shape, it requires a bit of wiggling to get it in place correctly. 
Attaching the display connection and installing the battery, we can test out our S10 Plus. I need to make sure I can get the software side of things working before I continue with the repair. Plugging the phone into a charger, it lights up saying the bootloader is unlocked and software integrity cannot be verified. Pressing the power button to continue, the phone just restarts displaying another warning that the phone isn't running Samsung software. This is as much as I can get the phone to do in its current state, so I'll need to flash some original software to bring back the device into a functional state. I attempted to boot into both recovery and download mode with no success using the normal method. In the end, I found there was no need to hold the power button, just plug the phone into a computer and be holding the Bixby and volume down. From here, I could enter the device unlock mode and relock the bootloader. This will remove all those warning messages on boot, and now all that's left to do is flash the original software back onto the phone. It's clear to me now what made the previous owners so angry. They had been attempting to gain root access or install a custom OS, but had failed and couldn't get any software reinstalled. While if you're in this situation, I'd recommend getting a technician to work on it or taking a step back to relax and then trying again, the previous owner decided to instead take their anger out on the phone by drilling through it. With an OS finally installed, it's time to see whether or not we fix this phone. Everything appears to be working, but the battery icon is flashing and the brightness is stuck really low. This is because the wireless charging module has not yet been installed. It contains a temperature sensor for the battery and without it, the phone will not charge. And as there's 3% battery, the brightness is also limited. With the software side of things up and running, it's time to continue reassembling the phone. Reattaching the headphone jack and speaker, I can get it fastened back into place. All screws used throughout this phone are all Phillips head and all the same size, which makes repair incredibly simple with no need to keep track of dozens of little screws of all different lengths. With the front facing camera reinstalled, I can get the battery back into place. The new frame didn't come with adhesive, so I had to improvise and apply some of my own. Reinstalling the original battery, we can connect it and press the battery into place. After removing some protective foam from the earpiece, I'll apply some new adhesive, which is responsible for holding in place the wireless charging module down on the speaker. I can then reattach that wireless charging module with its Phillips head screws. Adhering the bottom of the wireless charging module, I can clean off the inside of the phone to remove any dust before removing the protective film over the camera lenses it's now time to get our back panel reinstalled. It already comes pre-attached with adhesive, so after the protective film is removed, we can attach our new back panel onto our S10 Plus. All that's left to do is remove the plastic protective film from both the back and front. And we're done. So this is it, an unrecognizable Galaxy S10 Plus. A phone that once had a hole drilled through it has been restored with an all new exterior and reflashed software. While the outside is completely new, many of the internals remain the same, including the motherboard, speaker, wireless charging module, and screws. The phone already had a screen protector applied under the protective film, as well as protective film around the sides. I will leave this attached for when I sell the device. Samsung makes some really nice color options in their smartphones, and this one is no exception. The prism green color looks amazing, and I'm happy with how the device turned out. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.